What's up, summoners? King Blair here. Today, we're going to be talking about damage sharing versus damage mitigation and why they are so important to your teams, particularly if you're using a slower turn two team. They are critical that you're using both of these uh, things together. So, if you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and join the Discord server. Link down in the description. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So first, let's start with the difference between damage mitigation, damage sharing. Then we're actually going to talk about each of them individually, some of the units that have it, and particularly the artifact that actually has it. And then lastly, I'll show you why it's actually so important that you have this damage mitigation effect on your team if you don't want to just get clapped, right? And a lot of people are like, oh, if I don't take turn one, I lose the game. That's not actually the case. Turn two teams are very strong because of these damage uh, mitigation and damage sharing effects that you can have on your team. So damage mitigation and damage sharing. The easiest way to look at these is going to be through the artifacts that you should always have. And one of the reasons that knights are so good is because they have access to these two artifacts, that being Aureus and Adamant Shield. So Aureus is going to be something that you share damage with everyone. So if one of your allies would take the damage, so for example, let's say you have this on one of your units. If an Arbiter Villager normally does 10,000 to all units on the board, right? Let's say he just does 10,000 damage flat to everyone, just for the sake of it. What this does, essentially the 20% damage share is the other allies, instead of them taking the full 10,000, they're only going to be taking 80% since it's a 20% damage share. That extra 20% will go to the unit with Aureus, so it will be something like the unit with Aureus will be taking 16,000 damage, while the other units will be taking only 8,000. This is a lot of damage mitigation when you put something on a knight that is already taking less damage from an Arbiter Builder. Realistically, they're only taking 5k from an Arbiter Builder S3. This makes it so your squishier units, like for example your Landy, instead of taking the full 10,000, takes 20% less. And this can add up a lot, especially because aggressive teams are typically on the squishier side, which will allow your slower Bruiser team to come in. Now, as far as damage mitigation, we have the adamant shield this is a lot of other units have this and we'll go over this in a second but damage mitigation is just a straight up reduction of damage so going back to our example let's say you have a team and everyone on the team is taking 10,000, but one of your units has adamant shield now instead of your whole team taking 10,000 damage you're instead going to be taking 8,400 damage for everyone there is no damage sharing it's just a straight damage reduction assuming that they crit you right that is very very again very significant the other thing is that both of these do stack together which is one of the reasons that you see knight teams have both aureus and adamant shield be so tanky and so hard to take down because essentially they have the 20 percent from aureus and they have the 16 percent from adamant shield now this is actually not going to be directly additive so it's not just like a 36 percent damage mitigation overall it's more like adamant shield reduces 16 percent and then the aureus soaks up the rest it's a little bit less effective percentage but overall you are reducing a significant amount of damage now the other part that a lot of people seem to get confused is okay we talked about Aureus and we talked about adamant shield but we know that there are units that have each of the effects so we mentioned that damage sharing and damage mitigation can be used together but they cannot be used at the same time so let's take a look at some units that have some of these effects and kind of break it down for you so let's look at a warrior Let's first look at the Aureus, right? The Aureus style effects, some damage sharing effects. So let's look at someone like Seaside Bologna, right? So if we go to Seaside Bologna, her kit explicitly states that she is going to share 30% of the damage suffered by the caster with the foremost ally, right? And when the stronger one applied, the sharing effect is granted only only the only strongest effect is applied this is another big portion for confusion for a lot of players because they're like okay if i see said Bellona, i don't need Aureus, right that's the thing that a lot of people think well the thing about it is this only applies to seaside what this essentially means is that Aureus and seaside passives don't stack on herself her other allies like for example let's say you have fallen cecilia two other units and seaside Bellona, your two other units are not getting any damage sharing but they can get the damage sharing from the Fallen Cecilia Aureus, and with the Seaside, the Fallen Cecilia will be taking only the 30% from Seaside Bologna, right? So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. So essentially, the two other allies that don't have any effects can still damage share with Fallen Cecilia with Aureus, 
But with Seaside, Aureus does not affect the Seaside as far as the damage sharing goes because Seaside's effect is 30% damage share. And it explicitly will stay in the character's kit damage sharing effects. That's the keywords you need to look at to see if the effects stack. If it says damage mitigation, then it's not the same. So this will still stack with something like Adamant Shield, right? This says damage sharing effects. And if we go back to the artifacts that are the, the some of the strongest artifacts in the game, we see that Adam and Shield says similar effects. This one does not state, it just says similar effects. Um, but Aureus should actually say damage. Other artifacts are the same. When more than one damage distribution, right? So this one, again, is damage sharing, damage distribution. Essentially kind of the same key words. Uh, only the strongest effect is applied, right? So it, it does not make it similar to Adamant Shield because Adamant Shield is a straight damage reduction. Aureus is sharing. All right, so let's look a little bit more units so this makes a little bit more sense to you guys. Again, looking at a unit for this, such as Troublemaker Cross Set. So if we look at damage Troublemaker Cross Set, he receives 20% of the damage suffered by the ally in the back row, and it goes up to 40%. So essentially, it's going to be like an Aureus, but now this only makes it so the unit in the back gets it. So if you were to put an Aureus on your Tikra set, the back line would still get the 40% from his passive, but it would not get the Aureus. The rest of your team would get the Aureus. This is typically why you see Troublemaker Cross set with Adam and Shield for most protection, because with Adam and Shield, your back line not only gets the 40%, but also the Adam and Shield, because when we see it, Again, this is, it takes the damage away. And only the highest damage distribution will take effect. So again, damage distribution. We see that here, the same wording that we saw in Aureus. So this does not stack with Aureus, but it's not the same thing as Adam and Shield, which is why Troublemaker Crosset and Adam and Shield do work together. Now let's look at some damage mitigation heroes so you guys can get another idea. LQC, right? She has a built-in adamant shield essentially so she decreases the damage from a critical hit by 30 percent and decreases for allies by 15 percent which is a little bit weaker than adamant shield when more than one damage reduction effect is granted only the strongest effect is applied so this means that if you have lqc going back to our example for herself this is 30 percent damage mitigation not damage sharing which means that she can still benefit from a troublemaker girl sets passive or from an aureus right so she gets that double passive. So again, hopefully this at this point, you're starting to understand, okay, I'm seeing the difference between damage share, damage mitigation. They do stack, right? And of course, we can keep going with some other, uh, some other units so you guys can keep kind of seeing the same wording and why Adam and Shield and Ori stack and why what each effect where it would be. And if you're ever confused, then you can read the wording. So again, if we look at her, damage suffer from critical hits is reduced. When more, more damage reduction effect is granted, only the strongest is applied. Again, damage reduction. This means that it will not stack with Adam and Shield, but you can still use an Aureus with our team and Mercedes, right? And you will get the full Aureus effect or something like a Troublemaker Cross set, right? So hopefully that's starting to make sense how it stacks and it gives you a very good idea. And it's, it's the same thing even for things like Crimson Armin, right? This one is considered, it, even though it does not say the critical hit damage, it will say damage reduction effect, although this one does also protect you from crits. What this means is if you happen to have an Adamant Shield on a unit and you had Crimson Armin, if they don't crit, you would probably get the Adamant Shield since Adamant Shield is 16% versus this one is only going to be 16% uh, on Adamant Shield. This is only 15%, but if you don't crit, this one will take over, right? So again, Kind of makes sense once you start thinking about it. But now let's actually see the effects of why damage mitigation and damage sharing effects are so good in this game. So here we have your typical Arbiter Vildred, right? And I gave him very standard stats, 4,000 attack, 300 critical hit damage. We told him, you're gabbing today, you're chilling, right? You're, you're, you're doing work. And he's going to be doing, if you see here at the bottom, 1,400 attack right which is a lot of damage that is going to be a lot of damage but you see here we don't have any damage mitigation by the way this is from the epic 7 damage calculator in case you were interested but now when we see this it's like okay there's no damage mitigation and this is your squishy unit right let's say this is your landy right this is very expected for my landy now if you include something like an adamant shield that is going to be 16 percent damage reduction so we see that we drop about 16 percent damage right that 14,000 is now 12,000 so, oh, this is damage transfer. Sorry about that. 
Damage reduction is over here. So we see that, 16%. Now, if we put the damage transfer from the Aureus, we see that going down by 20%. So again, it is not additive. It's not like you're losing 36% of the damage, but you're still losing quite a bit, right? Now let's look at something like, for example, Seaside Bologna, right? And we can double check this, that it's not the same thing as just missing 36% uh, outright. It would be a lot more damage reduction, right? So it's a little bit less than actually getting the full the full 36%, but it's pretty close for all intents and purposes. But you can see here the difference is going to be, this is would be your Aureuses, your Seasides, your Chico Sets. On this side, on the damage reduction side, you have your Adamant Shields, your LQC passives, your Ameru passives, right? I think Carrot also has damage reduction versus damage transfer. Proof of Valor is another damage reduction. So for Proof of Valor, it's 30% starting off right so now you saw that 14,000 attack gap rb that always stomps your face right instead of doing 14,000 that kills almost every single unit in this game if you were to have both adamant shield and Aureus, and Aureus also gives that defense buff that i'm not accounting for your squishies can actually survive arbiter vildred right you can actually survive arbiter vildred with a thousand defense which is like a very low defense assuming you have Aureus and and adamant shield and if you think about it for Tyrell make a cross set one of the reasons he's so good if you give him them uh adamant shield this is how much you're actually taking you're almost cutting that you're basically cutting the damage almost in half right that is ridiculous when you take into consideration how squishy and how tanky other units are with when you think of something like an lqc who has 1400 you are taking significantly less damage from the Arbiter Wildren. So that is why damage mitigation is so critical. And it's a mistake that I see a lot of players not appreciate. Is that they don't appreciate how much damage mitigation actually does for your team. And how much damage it's actually cutting. Right? I see so many early game players picking slow drafts. And complaining that they can survive against Arbiter Wildren. But then they're not bringing a single Knight on their draft. Or a single Aureus. Right, so that's why you typically do see slower players always having knights, always having buffs, because they'll be able to survive the burst, counter back the burst, and potentially heal if they're using a, some form of healer. So hopefully this gives you good insight into the difference between all the different effects, and you are more experienced with it. But that is all I got for you guys today. I hope y'all enjoyed, and I will see y'all next time. Peace.